Tesla moves $750, $750 million worth of Bitcoin last week, right? What is Elon going to do? I really hope he shocks the industry uh, by saying something like, you know what? We are going to fully embrace Bitcoin, right? We moved those, you know, what we had because of some accounting thing. But now we will be putting all of our money into Bitcoin. Like, I really wish he would say something like that in his call. Maybe he does, right? That's the best outcome. Maybe another outcome is he just says he moved in. That's it. Nothing else happens. The worst case outcome is, of course, he announces that they are selling it all or they sold it all. I, you know, um, well, if they did sell it off, we would see it because it's all on the blockchain. But hopefully that's not the case. Right. If Tesla implements a Bitcoin strategy like a micro strategy, like any anyone else that have, uh, I think they'll go benefit. If if Elon is just using Tesla as a cash cow, that's what he should do. Right. He'll benefit from the gains that he'll receive from Bitcoin, from holding Bitcoin and his stock will skyrocket. So why not do it? Just just buy. Just keep on buying Bitcoin, Elon. That's all he needs to do. All right, outside of uh, a lot of earnings, we have, of course, economic data, uh, existing home sales, jobless claims, manufacturing, durable goods, consumer sentiment. I'm pretty sure all of those are going to come in a little bit, either in line with expectations, which is going down or lower than expectations, which could be good in a way because of the upcoming rate cut that we're going to have um, because consumer sentiment and overall spending I've talked about this is going down especially like you guys know I like cars and I've talked to dealerships and stuff it's getting bad with cars you go in dealerships they're empty manufacturers know this too and their their quarterlies are really bad um, that's why they're giving like zero percent or one percent APR on cars now Right. And I'm I'm assuming it's not just with cars, it's with everything across the board. So I, I'm a, I'm going to assume that all these economic data that's gonna be coming out going forward, we're going to see maybe, you know, lower numbers. But it may not hit quite yet, but maybe next year. Uh, we also will have a lot of Fed speakers. A lot of speakers, again, we always have a lot of FOMC speakers giving their opinion. Kashkari is always bearish, okay? Very, very bearish uh, or hawkish, I should say. So whenever he talks, uh, sometimes um, the market crashes. Um, yeah, he's just like super bearish about everything. So I, I normally just ignore him. And everyone else is in line with what Powell says. Uh, and then, you know, of course, it's all leads up to a couple of weeks uh, when we have the next FOMC meeting, right? And right now it's baked in 92% chance we will get a 25 basis point cut. There's very little chance that we're not going to get a cut and very and no chance right now to get a 50 basis point cut. Okay. Unless something drastic happens. I guess we'll see. All right. Now, let's go to Bitcoin. What's going on with Bitcoin? A lot of good stuff. A lot of great stuff, in fact, okay? There are so many great things. Yesterday was just a tip of the iceberg. I'm still maintaining the fact that we can turn around and there's a really good chance, I believe, that we can hit all-time high this week. And I'll show you why. I'll show you why. Because those pesky shorters, they're basically gone. And if you're looking at like starting from 69 above, they're pretty much all gone. But what is there to look forward to this week? There are a lot of earnings, a ton of earnings this week from Wall Street. A lot of major companies. I guess they will be giving their forecasts, right? And that's always important. And there's one particular company that I've been talking a lot about with my cruise and my walk video, 
And that is Tesla. And uh, they're reporting on Wednesday. And why they're important is, obviously, uh, Tesla did something amazing last week. And I'm still, like, buzzing over. I still watch replays of it. To catch a rocket that's 20 stories high. Like, when you look at a video, you don't you just, you just see this little rocket. And you, you don't think it's amazing. But, like, when you actually, like, take a look at how big that rocket is. It's a 20-story rocket. You're catching out of air that's dropping at 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 the speed of sound i don't think people realize how how crazy and monumental that that event was and on the first try uh etf inflows absolutely massive massive last week okay so basically that's setting up the stage for for more inflows i mean Wall Street is feeling the FOMO. Right now, you could argue that there is no better investment out there. Okay, in terms of Wall Street, you know, they all these like hedge funds, you know, every every year, right? They have to show performance. <laughs> and it's embarrassing when they have to report their their annual performance at the end of the year or next year. And they actually underperform versus their peers. And it's more embarrassing if they underperform versus, say, just the S&P 500. And that happens all the time. I remember when I covered it in, 20, in early 2022 when there was like a page of like 50 hedge funds and showed their performance in 2021. And all of them, except with like exception of like seven of them, um, underperform versus S and P 500. So that mean, that means if you just bought a ETF that followed S and P 500, you would have outperformed like 90% of the hedge funds out there, which made them look really stupid. And the six out of the seven that outperformed the S and P 500 did not outperform Bitcoin, and only one did, only because they bought GME, and that was a mistake. It was just a accident. Right. So my point is, had any person just bought Bitcoin, they would have basically outperformed every hedge fund in Wall Street. So why do you need hedge funds? Why do you need to pay anyone to manage your assets when you could just buy Bitcoin and outperform anyone? Right. That's how it's always been and probably will be how it always will be. Right. And I think Wall Street is starting to realize that. So they just keep buying more Bitcoin. That's why the Bitcoin strategy has been so dominant. So last week, obviously, if you look, major, major, major inflows last Friday, 200, 270. And then Thursday, 470. Wednesday, 460. Tuesday, 370. Monday, 555. You get the picture. I mean, we're talking about billions upon billions upon billions. And I think for the remainder of this year, it's not going to be different. You're going to have billions upon billions upon billions upon billions every single week. Because who are, who are the ones that's buying these ETFs? Probably the hedge funds. <laughs> Probably the hedge funds. And the banks and the, the companies. Everyone that wants to do well because they understand nothing outperforms Bitcoin. It's it's the best investment out there. It's the best asset to hold long term too. So I think people are starting to warm up and it's only going to accelerate. So this is like, you know, a perpetual cycle of buying and driving the price higher, which will drive more buying and the price goes higher and just keeps on going. It's going to keep on moving. That's it.